Today's case comes to us from Japan. This case, called the Saitama Dog Lover Murders, occurred in the city of Kumayaga in Saitama Prefecture in 1993. It centers around customers of a dog shop going missing and being murdered. The victims' belongings were incinerated and their bodies were dismembered and disposed of, making them bodiless murders. They were initially classified as unsold due to a lack of evidence until a similar case occurred in Osaka. Let's take a closer look at the Saitama dog lover murders. It was April 21st, 1993, in Japan's Saitama Prefecture, a man named Kawasaki Akio didn't return home, prompting his family to report him missing. They found out he had visited a pet shop named Africa Kennel in Kumayaka City in Saitama Prefecture before he went missing. The shop was run by a couple named Sekine Gen and Kazama Hiroko. Kawasaki had gone missing after he went to complain to the couple for selling him an old and ordinary dog disguised as a Rhodesian Ridgeback, a rare breed, for a large sum of money. His car was found near a station, but he was nowhere to be seen. What happened to Kawasaki? Police found that two Yakuza gang members and a woman who knew the pet shop couple also went missing after they went to meet the couple at their pet shop. But they couldn't continue their investigation because they didn't have enough evidence. Then in 1995, a dog lover murder case was reported in Osaka, making people talk about whether it was related to the four dog lovers going missing in Saitama. Reporters heard about the Saitama couple and urged the family of the first victim, Kawasaki, to relook into the case. The shop owner, Sekine, was already a person of interest. He went around saying that he could win a gold medal if murder was an Olympic sport. In that way, he liked to brag about his crimes. He boasted to a Yakuza friend that he had killed 30 people and shared venison with them often, even though he had never hunted. There were suspicions among police officials that Sekine had given human flesh to the Yakuza to get rid of the bodies of the people he killed. Even though the police had strong suspicions, they still didn't have any hard evidence and nearly two years passed. However, a confession by an accomplice of this couple uncovered what happened. Let's take a closer look at the case based on the testimony of the accomplice. The couple, Sekinegen and Kazama Hiroko, were well known in the 1980s as breeders of Alaskan Malamute dogs. But the Japanese recession led to a drop in sales, and this combined with the extension of the building put the couple in debt. They were able to keep their business running by scamming customers and raking in immoral profits. They used the crude trade trick of selling ordinary dogs, but disguising them as rare breeds for large sums of money. They continued to be fraudulent while looking for another person to scam. Kawasaki, a man who had an industrial waste disposal business with his brother in Saitama Prefecture's Kyoda city, caught the eye of Sekine. At the time, Kawasaki was looking for a new business while managing his company amid competition after the recession. Sekine showed Kawasaki a Rhodesian Ridgeback and told him if two were crossbred, the dogs could have puppies and he can sell them for a fortune. When Kawasaki asked how much the two dogs were, Sekine told him 11 million yen, which is over 81,000 US dollars. Sekine tried to sweet talk Kawasaki into purchasing them, saying the puppies would make him a significant amount of money. Kawasaki gave in and bought a pair of Rhodesian Ridgeback dogs. Not too long after, Kawasaki heard from an acquaintance that Rhodesian Ridgeback dogs go for no more than $760 each and that the male dog was too old to breed. He was scammed by Sekine. Kawasaki immediately went to the pet shop and demanded a refund. But Sekine refused, prompting Kawasaki to threaten legal action. Sekine consulted with his wife Kazama and they decided they couldn't give Kawasaki a refund. They made up their mind to get rid of him. 
On the evening of April 20th, 1993, the couple lured Kawasaki into a secluded garage, telling him he could get his money back, and fed him a drug capsule disguised as a nutritional supplement. Kawasaki voluntarily took the capsule, which contained slaughtering poison that the couple got from a veterinarian, and died. Sekine and Kazama were not the only ones who were at the garage that day. An employee of the pet shop, Yamazaki, was also there. Yamazaki, who was Kazama's driver, went to buy something at a nearby gas station before Kawasaki arrived. When Yamazaki returned, he saw that Kawasaki was dead. Sekine threatened to kill Yamazaki, who was apparently in shock, and he even asked if his kids were healthy. Then, Sekine asked Yamazaki to be his accomplice. Yamazaki eventually gave in and provided a bathroom as well as took part in the transport and abandonment of the body. Yamazaki helped Kazama move Kawasaki's car to an underground parking lot near a station. The following day, they dismembered Kawasaki's body, which was in Yamazaki's bathroom, put his bones and belongings in a barrel, and lit them on fire. They then disposed of other evidence in a riverside forest. They dreamed of a perfect crime, but there was someone who noticed their plot. It was a Yakuza member who was close to Sekine. Endo Yasutoshi looked out for Sekine in various ways, including being an arbitrator when he was having issues with customers. Endo and his driver, Yakui Susumu, started to be suspicious of Sekine after Kawasaki went missing. Endo was confident that Sekine and his wife murdered Kawasaki and requested and threatened the registration of Sekine's land and building. Eventually, Sekine and Kazama decided to kill Endo. On July 21st, 1993, Sekine and Kazama asked Endo to meet to hand over the registration and persuaded both Endo and driver Wakui to take the same nutritional supplement disguised drug capsule that Kawasaki did. They too voluntarily, without any suspicions, took the capsule. Endo fainted soon after, while Wakui didn't. Sekine was taken aback. To buy time, he lured Wakui to the street, saying they had to call an ambulance. On their way, the drugs took effect and Wakui died. The body was taken to Yamazaki's home, and in an effort to destroy evidence, they dismembered it and cut it into small pieces. According to Yamazaki's testimony, Sekine and Kazama looked skilled as well as relaxed when dismembering the body and even hummed a tune while doing it. Just like Kawasaki, the dismembered bodies of Endo and Wakui were abandoned in a riverside forest. But that wasn't it. Sekine had his eye on a female customer named Sekiguchi Mitsue, who was the mother of a former employee. Knowing that Sekiguchi trusted Sekine, he proposed that she be a shareholder of the Africa Kennel and asked for an investment. On August 26, 1993, Sekine met Sekiguchi and received the investment. He handed her a drug capsule again. Different from previous cases, Sekine is said to have carried out this crime on his own. Then on January 26, 1994, a suspect in the dog lover serial murders was arrested in Osaka. Since it was similar to the dog lover missing persons cases, the media started to cover it extensively. Reporters converged on the Africa Kennel. Four dog lovers went missing in the Saitama Prefecture, and it was revealed that all of them had connections to the owner of the dog shop, putting both Sekine and Kazama into the spotlight. They shamelessly denied any wrongdoing, but there was someone who couldn't. It was Yamazaki, who had no choice but to become an accomplice. Yamazaki made excuses to the police in his unstable mental state and suddenly disappeared with his wife. Police searched for Yamazaki's wife, who had a record of fraud in the past, saying there are allegations that his wife embezzled $384,000 worth of funds. Finally, on December 3, 1994, Yamazaki confessed to all crimes. Along with his confession, he promised prosecutors that he would cooperate. 
His confession helped police locate the remains and belongings of the victims. And on January 5th, 1995, Tekine and Kazama were arrested. There were a total of four victims. Kawasaki, who was poisoned on April 20th, 1993. Yakuza member Endo and driver Wakui were poisoned on July 21st. And Sekiguchi, Sekide's mistress, who was poisoned on August 26th. But Yamazaki scrapped the plea deal he had with prosecutors and he all of a sudden refused to testify. This prolonged the trial. Sekine and Kazama pointed the blame on each other. They both claimed they weren't the main culprit, but the judge said they equally conspired and carried out the crimes. And on March 21st, 2001, they were given the death penalty. The couple shamelessly appealed, but the Tokyo High Court supported the first verdict and dismissed the appeals on July 11, 2005. The couple appealed again, but the country's highest court dismissed the appeals on June 5, 2009, confirming the death penalty verdict. In terms of Yamazaki, the court acknowledged that he never carried out murder on his own, and he was threatened by the couple. He was handed a three-year prison term and was released in August 1998. The part of the story that still has many people scratching their heads is the sudden disappearance of at least three men and women related to Sekine in 1984. They disappeared without a trace. The media only reported three missing persons. There were a number of tip-offs about suspicious deaths, so there could have been more. The evidence that was discovered was only supported by the testimony of the accomplice. The couple never confessed to their crimes. Sekine continued to be fascinated by his ability to get rid of bodies completely. He destroyed evidence in a very grotesque way, cutting up the bodies into steak-sized pieces at his employee's house and feeding it to fish in the river, and then burning the remaining bones, clothes, and other belongings in a barrel and spraying the ashes in the backwoods. Sekine's health deteriorated during his incarceration, and he died on March 27, 2017. Kazama is said to still be imprisoned at the Tokyo Detention House. This case recently came back into the spotlight after the interview on Japanese broadcasting of a Buddhist monk who escaped death from Sekine. The monk, Miki, first met the culprit during his university days when he was around 20 years old. His university dormitory and the dog shop were around four kilometers away. Miki and his friends visited the shop one day, and the shop owner proposed to Miki that he would pay 150,000 yen a month for taking dogs on 15-minute walks twice a week. Miki was tempted by the offer, but he decided to put it off. Then the man offered the students canned coffee, and Miki drank one. After the dormitory teacher told Miki not to be greedy while fulfilling his duty as a monk, Miki refused the job offer the following day during a visit to the shop. The man at the shop again offered Miki some canned coffee. He drank one. Miki visited the shop for a third time. The man gave him one more coffee, but he refused and went on his way. Three years later, Miki said he heard from his dormitory teacher that the man from the shop was arrested as a serial killer suspect. He didn't think much of it until his acquaintance told him a horrifying story of meeting Sekine at a visiting room of the detention house. The acquaintance said Sekine told a story about Miki. All the canned coffees that were given to the monk were filled with poison except one. All three times the monk visited the shop, he chose the canned coffees that didn't have poison in them. Based on Miki's story, the crimes of the couple seem to have started before 1993. Aside from the four couple that they cannot deny because evidence was discovered, there could be countless others. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.